Hello, everybody. Spot of Nerd here with another hopefully enlightening and beautiful and everything else positive episode. Tonight, today, this afternoon, this morning, whenever you listen to this, we are going to talk about a few different things. We're obviously going to talk about some world things. And we're also going to talk about some show stuff because, quite frankly, if uh, you care or if you've watched the movie way back in the day, Willow is an absolute atrocity. And I highly encourage you to not watch the show because it is truly that bad, which I'll go into a little bit here. You know, but first and foremost, England is officially out of the World Cup 2022 in Qatar. And, you know, if I'm being honest, there is that little part of me that, you know, I mean, if you've ever watched the documentaries that are on Netflix and you can see them on YouTube and stuff like that, there is no doubt about it. FIFA is corrupt. The game is corrupt. You know, you have literally the referee is from France. He's known to, uh, I mean, essentially be prone to his people, et cetera, so on and so forth. And, you know, if you watch the game against France this last Saturday, you know, fouls were not called. um, Just things that you can definitely tell didn't add up. You know, and I know that's conspiracy theory type thinking, and I am one of those people, and I have no problem admitting it. And if anything, I'm very proud of that. But, you know, if you actually look at it, I mean, the majority of my thought process, though, is the fact of the matter is France was the better team. Again, you know, you look at most of our passing was to French players. You look at Kane, who missed. A penalty kick which I mean who knows what would have done at that point but the bottom line is the English team showed up the way they normally do scared nervous and dependent on fouls and penalties to win the game and that is not how you compete at this level you know whether it's rigged or not I don't know but the bottom line is you don't come into this tournament destroying some teams And then you end up like we did with France, where we can't even barely get a goal in unless it's a foul in the penalty box, which ends up in a penalty. It's just not how you play this game, and it's not how you play this game at this level. So I obviously am extremely proud of the England national team. I am extremely proud of how far they got, but they don't, the way they played against France, they don't deserve to move on. They really don't. Um, And that is from an English supporter. I still support my guys. I still support them in the future. European Championship is the next one in 2024. But again, the bottom line is in in this tournament, the World Cup, they don't deserve to move on the way they played against France. They know better. I think the players know better. They know how to be better. I think realistically, I mean, I do think England is the better team, but they didn't show up. And I think that is what ultimately ended the 2-1 finale. So from now, I think it's that cliche, you know, I'm really not too interested in watching it. But I do hear Morocco is still in there. And it would actually be kind of cool because they are the underdogs. So it would be nice to see them go all the way through if uh, they get that chance. So tomorrow's, um, I think tomorrow is their game, maybe. And then Wednesday, and then the final is actually Sunday. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But um, yeah, kind of moving on, you know, talking about some of these shows, believe it or not, a lot of them are kind of finishing up. They're either finishing up totally or they're finishing up their seasons. And, you know, it's giving me that chance. I've mentioned this before where I can actually go back and watch some of the stuff I've always meant to watch. You know, maybe I haven't started it yet, or maybe I have started it. And, you know, sometimes there's those shows where they just, it doesn't grab you, but you kind of want to keep watching it just for the sake of, 
you know what? Let's see where this goes. You know what I mean? For example, um, wow, brain farts. No, yeah, uh, the cyberpunk edge runners. You know, I said in the last uh, podcast, it is an amazing show. It really, especially if you are somebody who enjoys anime and the cyberpunk kind of genre, it's an absolutely incredible show storytelling character development you know everything in between but it is definitely it's something that i don't feel is very binge worthy just in regards to uh how do i it's it's not that it's a bad thing but it, there's a lot of heavy detail oriented stuff about it very graphic very gory very detail involved so it's kind of like you got to really pay attention to understand kind of what's going on so again i do still recommend it but very much you probably might watch an episode or two before you kind of go okay i need to take a break watch something else you know um but the willow jesus christ um disney once again taking the biggest fattiest shit all over a beloved film back in the 80s or 90s whenever the uh original one came out and you know it's not as much you would think it would be the woke agenda based bullshit which of course is in there don't get me wrong it is dear god it is not even trying to hide i'll give you an example i swear to you there is a scene in this show we were only by the way we're only three episodes in and it is already that bad and you're gonna ask you're always gonna people always tell me well then why do you keep watching it Because I do enjoy watching these train wrecks to prove the point that, guess what? When you throw woke, agenda-based media bullshit in there, aka politics, you end up with a garbage show. You end up with a garbage film, whatever it might be. You know, I'm going to hopefully, I still want to go see Avatar this, uh, this week. But I'll be very honest, I am borderline walking in knowing that it's likely gonna have woke political bullcrap in there and it's gonna ruin the film i can promise you mark my words it is early this week the movie hasn't come out yet but i mark my words here and now for those listening 20 bucks says when i actually do a review on the new avatar film i guarantee you i will go off about how the movie was ruined by agenda crap spewed in down our throats I actually watched, I rewatched the first version, you know, the first Avatar film. And yes, is it too long? Yes. Is it a little much? Yes. But it was something amazing. I really do remember watching this film in theaters. And it was the first, I think it was like the first real 3D film that was ever, that was ever made. But it was amazing. I mean, you think about this, that movie was made 20 plus years ago. Um, I think at least I know it's at least 15 to 20 years ago. You got to think from the CGI, from just the way they did it. It was incredible, absolutely incredible. And the story, I mean, sure. Was it a little lackluster? I mean, like I said, does it need to be three hours? Probably not. You could have probably made it an hour and a half, but it just, that's where, you know, James Cameron really did a great job. I think he's full of crap right now because, again, just go look at some of his interviews. It's a cliche, what I've always said. So that's where I'm a little worried about this sequel. But the bottom line is I do, there's a little bit of me that really, really does hope that we still get that same passion and joy that we felt back in the first one. You know, my age group that when we first had that film, I mean, we were teens 13 14 15 whatever i don't know but the bottom line is it's been a long time um for this sequel to come out and i'm very very worried that to be quite frank there's just it's gonna be uh, it's almost gonna stand on its own i don't even think it'll be a sequel it'll be its own movie because frankly when you do such a long period of time in between a film that's gonna be your end result you know and unfortunately that that end result usually ends in disaster to be quite frank so but willow i was gonna say 
whenever you know i get a lot of people sometimes that say like oh you you think too much on the politics you think too much on the agendas blah 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 blah. and i'm like okay well let me give you example a through z and i swear to you people in the first three episodes there is a scene with willow where he literally tries to lure a child away from its mother I mean, okay, maybe she's not the mother, but the bottom line is like the guardian. Let's just say a parent, a guardian or a parent. Sweet God, you're not even hiding anymore that there is a full grown adult male trying to lure a infant female child away from its parent or guardian. Jesus Christ, you cannot make this up anymore. And they're not either. They're just putting it right on the display for you all to see and watch. It makes me sick to my stomach, the fact that this is a fictional show about wizards and potions and everything in between. How do you fuck up this bad? The choreography, whenever there's, whenever, you know, when there's ever a fight sequence, I mean, you're, it's like you're watching something from the 1960s where it's so bad, it's hilarious. It's so bad that it's cringeworthy to watch. The way they, they kind of write the bad guys and the evilness, it's so bad. I genuinely cannot describe or detail you how bad this show is. Yes, I'm going to keep watching it because I need to now know, are they going to go deeper and further into the abyss of absolute pile of what? Shit. Absolute garbage seriously i can't get over it how bad this show really is um what else are we finishing or have finished or um let me look at my of course i have my handy dandy list which by the way if you are somebody who is like me uh they are not a sponsor whatsoever i don't even i don't even have sponsors for this show but if you are looking for a way to kind of keep track of all your shows that you watch, there is a really good app called uh, Hobie, H-O-B-I. It's really good because it's very up-to-date and it's very current. So you can kind of know when your next episode's coming. You can keep track of your shows that you're watching. And it's like a little checklist. So that way, if you've watched it, you can check it off and say, yep, I watched that, and then move on. And it's really kind of a nice way to keep track of what I need to watch, what I don't need to watch, what I'm caught up on, etc. And it's also really depressing because sometimes you'll see your show, you know, they're taking one of those breaks and, you know, the show doesn't return for three weeks. So you're just kind of like, shit. Um, you know, for example, I'm looking at it right now as we speak, you know, The Rookie, which I really enjoy, we don't get another episode for three weeks. Um, but then there's the exciting part where, you know, Star Wars, The Bad Batch actually is in three weeks as well. And, um, but, a, you know, again, you can get really excited because next week we have uh, Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan starting season three. Um, that's on Amazon Prime Video. That, I tell you what, if you love the James Bond esque type genre type shows, that is an amazing show. Jim from The Office stars as Jack Ryan, and it is so badass. Amazing storytelling, amazing characters, just really, really good kind of 007-esque type show. And um, very well told. The story will definitely grab you and keep you going. So they're starting up season three. Another one I'm really excited about starts next week. If you are a fan of... Uh, Squid Game was the Alice in Borderland. It's, um, gosh, I'm not, re it's very similar to Squid Game in the fact, imagine if Squid Game had a sci-fi-esque-ness to it, if that makes sense. They are just going to be, they just started their second season, which will be next week. But again, that first season, absolutely incredible. Imagine, oh my God, I can't believe I'm using this metaphor, but imagine a real life Fortnite the video game where you're kind of dropped into a city and you have to survive. You just have to survive somehow, some way. Um, very, very cool. Very, very good stuff there. So check that out. If you haven't already, that's on Netflix. Um, the Santa Clauses again, I won't even go into it right now, but the bottom line is 
if you want to hold on to the joy and the love that you once had from the original movie, The Santa Claus with Tim Allen, do not watch this show. Please, please, from the bottom of my heart, do not watch this show if you want to love and hold on to what the original was because it will be lost, completely lost watching this show. And it's heartbreaking. It really is because all the joy and the just the the happiness around the Christmas stuff is gone now because this show is so bad. It's it, it's not even it really isn't it's not the woke crap. It's not the 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 agenda or the politics. It's just extremely the the writing is just terrible. You know, it's I'm trying to think of like a way to describe it, but it just misses on every level. It really does. It has just it tries to bring a different take to the Santa Claus films and it fails on every level. It even makes the one with the clones. I think it was the second one. It actually makes that movie worth, you know, it makes it tolerable compared to the show. So uh, I would just recommend you stay far away from it as far away as you possibly can because it's just fucking disaster, you know. So the way we're going to kind of wrap up this episode is we're going to talk about one of my heroes, one of my idols, and that man is Elon Musk. And you can roll your eyes, you can turn this off, you can whatever you want to do, because I know the world right now hates this man. And I find it absolutely hilarious, you know, with all this Twitter aspect and basically giving the world exactly what we already knew from the start. You all denied it. You now have proof literally sitting in front of you as if the sun shines every single day. And most of you still don't believe it or you still won't accept the fact that the truth has finally come out. That censorship does exist. That conservatives are basically blocked or censored and everything in between. Oh, and the fact that, guess what? These giant big tech corporations really are the ones in control. It's not your government. Your government just goes along with it and collects the paychecks. But the bottom line is, all of this is everything we've been telling you. We've been telling you about the elections. We've been telling you about the COVID aspect and all of that. And you call this everything in the book. You call this racists and bigots and homophobes and transphobics and blah, 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 blah. But guess what? We were right. And it's gotta be hard. And I think I genuinely, I'm not even saying that to be an asshole. It's gotta be hard. To finally, you know, realize that, yeah, the one you said that was racist, me, the one that you call the bigot, me, the one that you hope die, me, I was right all along. And it isn't, you know, I know this sounds a little bit, okay, maybe let's back up a little bit. No, you know, I'm not going to back up a little bit because I'm sorry, but the last several years, most of you have absolutely, not even maybe directly towards me. Most of you have genuinely thought I would die. They, you wished I would die, perish, have something horrible happen to me, all because I think differently. And you know what? I'm gonna continue. I'm, I'm gonna continue to do it. You know, it's amazing how while you were wishing harm on me, I was just living my life. I let you live yours. You wanted to be in mine and yet the way you wanted to be in my life was through violence and basically vulgar horrible speech and you know maybe this tmi i don't know but the bottom line is i'm okay with it because at the end of the day i was right we were right and we now have proof and i do genuinely thank uh, Elon Musk, because he really is, he's a mastermind. He He's a genius, because not only did he 
revolutionize the entire electric vehicle world. He literally made it, you know, feasible. He made it possible for the average Joe to be able to own not only in not only an electric vehicle, but the man is literally designing future space the way that humankind might actually be able to do space travel and everything in between. Yes, there are other companies, Bezos and Amazon, of course, but the bottom line is, I think that's maybe what hurts these these people that don't like Musk right now. I, I think that's what hurt, it, it's what hurts you the most right now is because everything you, you, you've preached and you've wanted in terms of global warming this and environment that, he actually gave you the fix for it. But now that he's actually giving you the opposite viewpoint that you have, it's the cliche that you you now hate him and you you don't like him because he thinks differently. If you get my drift here, what I'm getting at is he thinks differently. And I've always said this on my own channel, and I'm not afraid to... I will continue to say this like a broken record without any hesitation or fear. I think differently. I don't think with disrespect. I don't think with harm or violence in mind. I just think differently. And there was a time, even in my own life when I was younger, where that was okay. It was okay to think differently. And you know what? Decades ago, I had people in my life that were okay that I thought differently. Now, I don't have anybody. But the difference between now and then is, I'm okay with it. It's been the greatest, this is, you know, I've said this again a thousand times and I'll say it a thousand times more. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with being alone because I look back at everything I've given to friends and family and people and acquaintance and complete strangers. I gave you love and I gave you respect and I never got anything in return. I don't need anything in return. But the bottom line is I can look back and say, you know what? I was a good, decent human being. Can you, can you look in the mirror and tell yourself I'm a good person? I really don't think you can, especially from what I've heard coming out of the mouths of 99% of the people I interact with or see online. And no, I'm not being dramatic or whatever you want to call it. I'm just speaking from actual personal experience. So I'm going to continue to live the life that I want, and I'm going to continue to live the life free of any sort of negative, violent harm spoken to me. Because the bottom line is, I finally have woken up. It's taken me literally my entire life. But I finally woke up. And right now, I am in the best mental state I've ever been in. I really am. The physical health, we'll figure that out. But the bottom line is, for the first time in a while, finally, I'm okay with who I am. And I'm okay with what's going to happen. It's going to be an uphill battle, and as my biggest idol in the planet, Steven Crowder, Louder with Crowder, you know, it's, it's, it's a battle of inches, and every day we, we fight for those inches, and I will continue to fight for those inches. Metaphorically, by the way, not harming anybody, but just, if you know me, you know me, you know where I'm getting at with that point of view. So, with that said, I hope you've gotten this far, and I hope you maybe you can kind of get a feel for where I'm at. And I really do hope that, you know, maybe one day you'll see that light that a lot of us see, whether you're conservative or, quote, on the right. I really hope one day you see the truth. And I really hope you see the fact the matter is, you are being played by, you are being played for a fool if you listen or agree to anything you see on the television or on your Twitter feeds or social media, whatever you want to call it, you are being played for a fool. It's time to wake up. I know you can because you're better than that. If the television tells you to stick your thumb in your asshole and blow it out your nose, and that's going to be the cure to COVID, 
I gotta believe that there's most of you out there would not do that. I really do. Some of you will. There's no getting away from it. Some of you will. But most of you will not need a breath mint after your breath smells like shit. Thank you all so much, honestly, for listening. I really do appreciate. Share me, subscribe me, comment, like, everything in between, wherever you can. The YouTubes, the podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Uh, we're obviously on Instagram, and you know maybe we'll uh, we'll hop over onto the the Twitters soon. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe in the new year. But until then, thank you all. Seriously, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate all the love and support. And we will see you guys next time. Later, y'all.